We have written countless web apps on this channel, but most of them pretty much always run on port 8080 or 3000 or 1099, whatever, right? So you can see this ugly colon port and ask ourselves, how can I run on port 80 so I don't have to type this port in this video? We'll learn how to make our app run on port 80 or seem to at least run on port 80. We're going to discuss why you really don't want your app to run on port 80. We're going to talk about all of that stuff. This is coming up. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Hussein, and we discuss all sorts of software engineering videos, discussions, tutorials, right? lectures in this channel so if you want to become a better software engineer consider subscribing well that's it let's just jump into this video guys and here's a small uh, app it's actually another video series that i made about alien invasion now i've built this game i pretty much suck at it as you can see right Oop, game over already so what i want to do is i want to run this app which is running on my raspberry pi but I want to run it on port 80 instead of port 8080. How can I do that? Okay, so we have discussed many, many ways in order to do that. One way is to do it through the port forwarding through the router. So if a packet came from outside the world and wants to go through port 80, you literally forward it to port 8080. Okay, you can do this on the router. I'm gonna reference the video here that we have done this on the on the discussion between private IP versus public IP on the router. That's kind of a little bit ugly because you have to go to router and change all that stuff. Another way we discussed is using Nginx. I was about to say Netflix for some reason. Nginx, which is a reverse proxy. We talked about reverse proxies, right? I'm gonna refer that video here you can check it out okay you can install another component running on port 80 and do some load balancing reverse proxy to forward port that coming to port 80 to your application so it seems as if it's running on port 80 okay but in this video i'm going to discuss a third manner using network address translation or NAT and we have discussed the concept of NAT you guys all right and uh, uh, we discussed the concept of NAT and how it works and then all about that I'm going to reference the video the theoretical aspect of NAT if you want to uh, if you want to learn more about it check it out but this is a, a completely uh, practical tutorial so let's just jump into it using NAT on your machine to forward packets to a different destination. So here's what we want to do. If someone try to visit, obviously, Raspberry Pi on port 80, you're going to get an error because there's nothing running on port 80. But here's what we want to do. If a packet came in to Raspberry Pi port 80, what the first thing with the box says is like, okay, is there anything running on port 80? Nope. I'm sorry. but it dies okay but we what we want to we want to insert a logic there in the nat table saying hey if something came to port 80 by the way check these rules don't just quit on us yet i want you to forward this packet to this destination which happens to be the same machine but different port that's what we do you can trick that to forward it to a different machine altogether which is pretty cool if you th if you ask me okay this is using ip tables let's get into it guys so here's how you do it okay so this is port 8080 obviously running but this is my app it's running on port 8080 so the first thing i want to discuss actually before we do the nat why don't we just run the app on port 80 right can we do that? Yeah, we can do HTTP dash server dash P and specify the port. And if I specify port 80, it might work, right? Right? No, sir. Look at this. Listen, E access. What does that mean? It means restricted access. So here's the thing about these ports from zero to port 1024. These are system ports, especially on Linux. You cannot listen on them 
is unless you are root. So if you do sudo, then you, this application, or Node.js or HTTP server or Python, it will run on port 80. It will allow you to do that. Okay, so let's try that. Now if I do that, problem solved, guys, right? But that's the worst thing you can do, guys. That's the worst absolute thing you can do. Never run your application as root. You know why? Because this is the first defense to the outside world. If you run this application as root and you expose it to the outside world, and if somewhere your application, I don't know, has a vulnerability and some attacker gain access to that, XSS, anything really, right? What will happen is they just got a root access to your machine and you're done, right? There's no other defense that protects you. That's bad, guys. That is very bad. So what we want to do is we want to run our application as just a normal user. And that user has limited access to our machine. So if in case it got... Uh, I don't know, it got uh, destroyed or something, right? So we, we don't actually lose our entire machine or, or uh, accesses, right? So that's that's the idea of things, okay? So never run as root, okay? And instead, uh, you have to run as a normal user, which I am doing, right? It's just my user is pi. It's called literally called pi, okay? Now we learned how, why it's bad to run as root. Okay, what we want to do instead is do some IP table magic. So here's what we want to do. We want to insert a row in this NAT table that tells us, hey, if there is a packet coming through port 80, please forward it to moi, but on port 8080, which is, that's what's our application is running on. So how do we, how do, we do this? We do this using the IP tables. Uh, a, a tool, if you will, that is uh, available on your Linux machine. Okay, uh, Raspberry Pi ha comes comes with that, right? But since this is a very is a system call, so you need to do sudo. Okay, you just said Hussein. She's like, you just told us how bad things are. You you don't have to run things on on root, and now you're running it in sudo. Well, that was your application, which is sketchy. This thing is a system command plus your administrator runs this command. You do not run this command every time. You run it once, and that's it, right? Your application has to run every time it stops, right? And when we do sudo IP tables, what we wanna do is we wanna use the protocol that is called NAT, Network Address Translation, and there are a lot of you protocols, if you will, or actions, and we want to use the pre-routing. Before we do pre-routing, oh, there's an S there. I want to pre-route anything that comes through TCP on destination port, not destination, it's actually the dynamic port. Anything coming on port 80, right, dash dash D port 80, I wanted to use the destination NAT protocol and this is my destination destination and to destination you specify the IP address which I'm gonna use the same IP address of the Raspberry Pi now some of you will say why don't you just type in the DNS entry of the uh, like a Raspberry Pi instead of driving the IP address well you can't you have to specify the IP address because this is a NAT table it doesn't know what DNS is if you type a string there you're gonna get an error okay so and this is the IP address that I want you to forward things on and this is the port I want you to forward things on that's pretty interesting guys and that's it right so this let's let's run through this let's try to understand it sudo everybody knows sudo IP tables Okay, I forgot an S, that's the S, okay. NAT, pre-routing, the protocol is TCP, because HTTP is TCP, right? And they're under the hood. Destination port, not destination port, but uh, the dynamic port coming, anything comes in port 80, right? I want you to use the direct, the destination NAT, 
to forward it to this destination, okay, which is 192.168.8080, which is my mesh, my Raspberry Pi on this application that is running on port 8080. So what this does is like any packet that comes to port 80 instead of just bleh, right, dying, just take it and forward it, okay? So since this is the same machine, we don't need to run any other command. That should be enough. Let's try that. And that's it. Okay, let's try our application, guys. Now if I run, run this, this will continue work, right? The port 8080 will continue to work. My application will continue to work. Oh, I didn't stop that, right? You can obviously, if you want, to block that, right? But now if I do just Raspberry Pi, it works. Let's see if I can do better this time. Look at that. Ooh. Oh my God. This close. Oh, it's this close. All right. Never mind. <laughs> okay. But that's essentially, in a nutshell, how we do in destination NATs, guys. DNAT. Okay, so we run our application using the NAT protocol. That's pretty cool, right? You can use the same command to forward it. Let's say if things came into my Raspberry Pi on port 80, I wanted to forward it to a completely different IP address. You can do that. But if this is different you need to add another command if this is different than the machine you're running into the uh, you need to use masquerade essentially and that's the command you want to use essentially right it is called i think so we don't have to run it but if you if you're forward to a destination that is not the same machine then you have to do this sudo ip tables net action is post routing Post routing because you just forwarded it, right? Same protocol, TCP, same thing, 80, right? Anything comes to port 80, I want you to masquerade it. And instead of using the D destination net, I want you to also masquerade, right? I don't have to do that, but if you want to uh, forward to a something other than your machine, then you have to run that command as well because that will do the, what we explained in another video, I'm gonna reference it here, which would does actually replace that IP address with another IP packet and just go ahead and forward it okay, through, the, through the protocols. Another thing I wanna mention, guys, is those rules that we talked about here, these are temporary barrier session, right? So that means the moment you reboot your machine, all these rules are gone, okay? So to persist those, after you add all the entries that you like and you like that table, what you can do is you can do apt get install ip tables persistent and did I spell that right? Persistent, right? Persistent, yeah. Once you do that, you install, it will prompt you to save that. Uh, configuration so this time it will automatically get loaded for each uh, reboot right so if you wonder but if you're experimenting and you want to clear the IP tables like you did the right wrong command or you did something wrong you can do this to clear it right sudo IP tables dash T net dash F and that will clear your tables all right, guys, I think that's it for me. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. Subscribe for more content like this one. And I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome.